people need to stop putting their Aiden Hutchinson blinders on. It was just a poor defensive performance, and Aiden Hutchinson was a big part of it. He just was. I'm saying that he was undisciplined and unimpactful. That's not good enough. That's not winning. That's not getting it done. I'm not saying it's over. I'm not saying cut Hutchinson. I'm not saying fire Dan Campbell. Why does everybody just run like, like you're coming after their children when you talk about it? I think Aiden Hutchinson would be the first one to tell you, I got to do more. Uh, Rich Cervantes says, Brad Holmes is more suspect in my opinion. Half his picks haven't even seen the field. I like him, but let's be honest. Yeah, Rich, let's be honest, shall we? Gold jacket, offensive lineman, Penny Sewell. Is that, a, is that an opinion? That's a, yeah, that's an opinion. But I think, is it more likely, if, of everybody you have, is he the most likely to be a gold jacket? Yes. That answer is yes. I think that's a, that's a fair question to ask. Amon Ross St. Brown whose entire rookie contract costs less than Kenny Galladay will make this September for the Giants. Smashing hit. Penny Sewell. Smashing hit. Malcolm Rodriguez. Starting linebacker. Six round. Your highest graded defender, according to Pro Football Focus. Which also tells you, you know, when you're finding, you're yeah, great to find the gem, but there's also two... That is not that more glaring. Also, too, that you have a six rounder that's that's doing that. Yep. So that's three, right there. Right. That's three. All you know, if a guy's starting for you, he's a hit. Aleem McNeil. Oh. I, I would argue that's been a hit too so far. A, a servant, the kind of guy you win with. Absolutely. He's not getting a gold jacket or anything like that. Does a lot of the dirty work, but he's out there and he does a good job. Look at the numbers. He's like anchoring that defensive interior line right now. Honestly, he's the best guy they've got. So that's Aleem McNeil. So that's four. He's only had 15 picks. So we're already above 25% hit rate. And, okay, Aiden Hutchinson. So which is it, guys? I was told it's a hit. Now, Pro Football Focus disagreed with me. The eye test disagreed with me. The box score disagreed with it. And I'm not saying it's over, and I'm not saying cut him, and I'm not saying trade him. But Sam, I go to Sam Flannel, our resident Michigan slappy, the man who calls for Aiden Hutchinson to be the defensive rookie of the year in the National Football League. The following statement, Sam, agree or disagree, uh, he's behind in that race now. He is definitely behind in that race, especially when you see what Trayvon Walker did, the number one pick, who everybody thought that that was a dumb pick by Jacksonville, and they gifted us Aiden Hutchinson. He had a sack and an interception. I'm not saying that Aiden Hutchinson was terrible at all. I'm saying that he was undisciplined and unimpactful. When you go to rush a guy like Jalen Hurts, he can easily step aside you. You have to break down. You have to you know, be disciplined. You have to flush him out to where there's other defenders, and he didn't do that. It seemed like every single time... He went to rush him. All Jalen Hurts did was sidestep. There was open field 10 yards. He did that on a couple thir critical third downs. So it was not a good week one for Aiden Hutchinson. I think next week it is perfectly set up for him to redeem himself, for the Lions to redeem himself. But this is a game that, I'm not going to lie, there's some pressure on Aiden Hutchinson. He has to show up. He has to show out. The team has to show out. But if they're going to win, I think Aiden Hutchinson is going to have to at least pressure Carson Wentz. Maybe make a couple plays. Maybe get a tackle for loss. A sack a couple QB hits because he kind of owes that to the team right now because he did not play well. I mean, pro football focus, what was he, the 120th out of 121 first ranked um, pass rushing defensive lineman? That's not good enough. That's not winning. That's not getting it done. And I'm saying this as the biggest Aiden Hutchinson fan in, in the room. I, probably in the building, I got up and cheered when he was drafted and I called for him to have 12 sacks and win defensive rookie of the year, but he is definitely behind in that race right now and it's fair to at least say that he did not play well at the very least he was unimpactful and that, and that was my question is it is it fair to want more at, oh. because i have to step lightly around here with this because no. you guys will come and blow me up and stuff like that on social media <laughs> in the chat room is it fair sam flannel says that it's fair okay Second pick in the draft he, you're, he's supposed to be a superstar he didn't play like a superstar in week one i'm not going to overreact too much I think he will be better, but his week one performance left a lot to be desired. It just did. And the fact that there's a lot of people that I see on Twitter, like analysts say that he played well. I, I just, I, I don't get it. He made zero impact on the game and the defense gave up 31 points and then they got the pick six. 
And then the Eagles rushed for 216 yards and four touchdowns, and they allowed A.J. Brown to have 155 yards receiving. That was just a poor defensive performance, and Aiden Hutchinson was a big part of it. He just was. Like, people need to stop putting their Aiden Hutchinson blinders on. If anybody were to have him, it would be me, and even I don't. And, and to, to be fair, I'll be fair to the people here. Uh, and Koke, it was one game. Jesus, well, it's the only game, Koke. Look around. Look around at what other teams, other players were doing. Look around. But Bruce Betterly says, Hutch will have a, a very good year. Yes, he had a poor first game. Ritz Ravenna says, I think he'll bounce back. That's fair, too. But DMAC, it's, it's one of those situations here. This number two pick, NFL, the team lost. People are looking to you. It's a big game for him, I, and I think that's fair to say. Yeah, but he's a competitor too. He knows that it was. And no one knows game. more than him. Fair. Here, and here's the thing, I can remember there was a couple times, two or three times, right where he was there in the hole where Hertz showed that he this is the NFL, and he ran around him either he over pursued or took the wrong angle and stuff like this. But it, it is a it is a learning curve. It is one game you have to give him that, but. If this was a, if this is anybody else's second overall pick with the stats that PFF had, everybody be down on him. Here's the thing: Aiden Hutchinson's a competitor. He knows this himself. He's gonna come back. I think what it showed, Neil, you nailed. What did you say last week? Oh, welcome to the league. Now you have to go against two Lane Johnson, Lane Johnson. right? These are pro, and and Jason Kelsey in the center and stuff like this. And I think that Philadelphia showed why. They got their own hosses and have pro bowlers on their right. offensive line. And they showed the... Yeah, it wasn't to me that he was... Uh, he didn't look like he belonged. It was. It looked like he was overmatched to the schemes and stuff like this. Caught doing the things that he did in college, over pursuing, you know, it's... A, it's a, we call it in hockey, it's too horny. Right, don't be don't be too horny. So I think they'll, they'll pick some of this stuff up and show him on tape. And the best thing is, he's the one that knows this, and he's going to come out and play this. And I expect him to have a, a a great game. Tyler Kane says this show's getting ridiculous with the overreactions. Tyler, this is the math, man. Like this is the math to it. And again, I'll step back. We have the clock. No one is no one has preached this more than DMac and I. Nobody has. You didn't see me out here calling for them to win divisions and golf to have 5,500 passing yards. You guys did that. You know what I'm saying? Like, th those were the expectations that some people had. And if you want to live up to those expectations, you got to win games at some point. You just do. And it's adding up. It is. I'm not, again, I'm not saying it's over. I'm not saying cut Hutchinson. I'm not saying fire Dan Campbell. But this is how big it is. This is for real. They're, keep, they're keeping score. Like, I, I, and I don't understand. Like, the, and the Hutchinson thing's always the trigger. I, I don't, why? Why, Stan Flint, why, why does everybody just run like, like you're coming after their children when you talk about it? I think Aiden Hutchinson would be the first one to tell you, I got to do more. I mean, is I that fair? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's because people want him to be good so bad. And I also think there's another angle. Well, because it's two fulfilling prophecies then, right? Yes. Your Michigan slappy fandom gets rewarded, and then and then our Lions fandom gets rewarded. Well, but I also think there's another side of, of the coin, and I'm going to like take this show in an interesting direction to where I think there's some Michigan State fans who are kind of like, you see, you see, he's, he's, not, he's not that good. I never want him in the first place. And the Michigan fans get extra sensitive. Like, like he's cut they're coming at my guy but the reality is it's just what we saw he didn't play well can he improve absolutely i still think he's going to be good i still think he's going to win defensive rookie of the year but he's not off to a good start so it's on him to make adjustments and play better next week and like i said with carson wentz being in, in the pocket he's not he doesn't have the mobility that jalen hurts has he might be able to rush him but they're and actually gonna, get they're to gonna him. scheme the blocks differently though that's absolutely true they yeah. got tape on aiden hudson they see where he can be exposed so Aiden Hutchinson has to adjust too. Is there anything to live rounds in the first NFL game? Like, not just first game of the season, but first real NFL game with the crowd. Yeah, and, and it's not the crowd because he played at Michigan and stuff like this, but with the men on the field. So now this week he knows exactly what he's in for. Is there anything to the fact that maybe he... You know, what it wasn't to expect. Have you ever tried anything like once 
right? And then go, oh, okay, now I get it. I didn't really understand it. Yeah, parenting, you know, marriage, uh, golf. And then you try to get better and you yeah. try to improve where, right? Losing weight. So let's just see if it's more if it's more consistent. Yeah, and, and, that, and that's what it is. Guys, we're just, we're discussing the ramifications because this is big boy stuff. And, it, and it, it's the NFL. And you only get 17 of these things. And the coach is, the coach is up against it a little bit. That, that's fa- I don't think that this is some blasphemous statement, man. And, and I don't think it's bla- I think if you asked Aiden Hutchinson, were you happy with your week one performance, what do you think he'd say, D-Mac? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I'm going to be better next, next week. I'm going to improve on the stuff. Right, because he's got the motor and he's got the desire and, and stuff like that. He wants to be good, so he's going to figure it out. He's in there asking questions. I'm if you sure. if you ask Dan Campbell, you know what? What do you think about your performance there in Week One? Not good enough. Not good enough. I got to be a lot better. I let the team down. I take responsibility. For There's that. no blasphemy in that. That's factual. It's accountability, I, so you can move forward. Self awareness. I I will give Dan Campbell credit in this, right? And I've talked about it. Like that's. That's probably my biggest question about this whole setup right now. I will give him credit for this, though. When he talks to the media, he's like, here's what I was thinking. And he says it. As opposed to what we saw yesterday, last night, with Denver's coach, where, you know, I don't I don't know what he was thinking. You know, especially when you have that opportunity where you're like, we brought this guy in and gave up the world for him. I put the ball in his hands and said, go win the game. And he didn't do that. He opted to kick a 64-yard field goal instead. Yeah, like only one of the longest field goals in NFL <laughs> history. That's what you want to count on instead of Russell Wilson. That's that's just not a smart decision. Again, so um, everybody can rest assured there's bad coaching decisions being made across this league. Not just here, but we got to worry about us. Dan Campbell improving on it. And don't make the same one twice.